And even though I train hard, I've been in football, soccer, basketball teams every day, and I was consistent with my training, I do get better. I was never as good as I wish, and I maybe not as good as my teammates that train basically the same amount. Of and maybe my training was not as good, or maybe I was not pushing myself in order for me to see the improvements. And now I'm trying to put it into the science to see what works best. Because in a few months, I'm going to run a half marathon. So it's the first I do. I've never been a long distance runner. But for me, I'm very excited. I'm trying to get the best. So let's get started. VO2 max refers to the highest rate of oxygen consumption achievable during intense physical exertion. It represents the amount of oxygen that the body can take in transport and use to produce energy during exercise. It is given as volume per unit of time. I think exercise is the single most important longevity drug we have, bar none. Like if you, if you, were, if you said like, I want to go deep down the rabbit hole of living longer, what do I need to do? It's, it's like a super well-crafted exercise program that is geared towards strength, muscle mass, and cardiorespiratory fitness. The most accurate way to measure VO2 max is usually inside a lab by using a face mask on the subject together with the metabolic heart to directly measure the volume and gas concentrations. The test involves either exercising on a treadmill or a bike at an intensity that increases every few minutes until exhaustion. Heart rate and lactate levels are usually measured as well. When this is not available, VO2 max can be estimated by the use of equations based on intensity at peak exertion, such as the Cooper test, as well as with I went to a sports center and I measured my view to max and other parameters, and according to them, I uh, was 43.1 milliliters per minute per kilogram of body weight. That was two years ago, that was during COVID, I was not running that much. And two years later now, I feel way better. I haven't been to a sports center yet, but I use a smartwatch, I have a Garmin, and it calculates it between the different trends you have done. And according to the app, I'm at 53, which is above average or good. And I also employ what is called the Cooper test. So for you guys that doesn't have a smartwatch or doesn't want to go to a sports center, or you can do something that's very simple, just go to a park and then you have to run for 12 minutes as much as you can, and then you measure how much you run. So I did it as well, just to have another point of reference, and I ran 2.64 kilometers, which puts me, you can look up some calculators online of the Cooper test, and it's a 47.7 of a VO2 max, which of course is different from the Garmin and from what I did two years ago. There's a little bias there depending on the wind, on oh, the first little bit hilly. So I think I could have done better, but at least I have a point of reference and I'm gonna try to measure it every month and see how much I can improve. So let's see what the science says and what's been recommended. And I'm gonna apply it and put the effort and see how much I can get better in the next months in preparation for my half marathon. Now the question is how to improve your VO2 max. The body has three energy systems, one for short-term high intensity exercise, one for mid intensity, and one for very low intensity, but very long exercise, which mostly involves aerobic respiration, which is the one we're gonna focus today, but any adaptation that we'll do will improve in all of them. It is important to understand how the oxygen delivery and energy production works because any adaptation from this protocol will improve different sections of the oxygen delivery system. First, oxygen is absorbed from the nose or from the mouth and it travels to the lungs, which is then delivered to all the tissues. The heart will pump the blood and will go the blood, the oxygenated blood will travel through the capillaries and arteries and will go to different parts of the body. What is important here and people sometimes ignore, it's that the better the cardiac output, the more the oxygen will be delivered to all parts of the body. And just to remind you what the cardiac output is, it's basically the heart rate times the stroke volume. And the stroke volume is how much blood is pumped 
in every bit. What people sometimes ignore as well is that athletes have bigger hearts, so they can pump more blood per beat, which in results in having a better cardiac output and a better oxygen delivery to all the tissues. Then the oxygen will travel to the different tissues and will be absorbed by the different cells. And then inside the cells, the oxygen will travel to the mitochondria and the mitochondria will produce more energy. So any adaptation that improve any part of the system, for example, by increasing the amount of mitochondria or enzyme inside the mitochondria, will end up producing more energy and a better oxygen consumption. What is important is before you try this protocol, you should consult your doctor and everything you try here should be done at your own pace. The protocol is divided in four different sections. An exercise plan, nutrition, recovery, and functional protocols. I went through the literature and read different systematic reviews of what are the best type of trainings to increase your VO2 max, your endurance, and for this, live longer. Based on my research, the best exercise plan is a combination of high intensity interval training and aerobic endurance. And as Andrew Huberman says, is going to be taking your system into greater than 100% of your VO2 max. It's going to be taking your heart rate up very high and it's going to maximize your oxygen utilization systems. That is going to have effects that are going to lead to fatigue at some point in the workout and that fatigue will trigger an adaptation. So let's ask what adaptation is triggering. Some studies have shown that these trainings can yield adaptation such as improvement in the cardiovascular system through higher capillary density and a better cardiac output, as well as an improvement in mitochondrial function. In order to plan our training correctly, it is important to understand the different heart rate zones. Physiologists like to separate into five different zones. The first one is our heart rate address, which is our day-to-day -day heart rate. Then we have zone two and zone three, which is for light and moderate intensity. Usually we can keep for longer time. And then we have zone four and zone five, which is for high intensity, which usually we can only keep for very short amount of time. We can all train and have the discipline of David Goggins. At the end of the day, I ask myself one question, can I take one more step? And usually the answer is yes. So if you can answer that question and not take another step, that is real failure. That is real quitting. It is important that you consult your doctor before you try anything. The best training plan I came up based on my research and what is suggested from Dr. Peter Atia or Andrew Huberman is to separate your training into 80% of your training should be in zone two or three and 20% of your training should be in zone four or five of your heart rate. What I like to do, and you can adapt it depending on the amount of time and conditioning that you have, is that for two to four times a week, I like to train between 30 and 60 minutes at zone two, which means I run and at a pace that I can still talk and hold the conversation without much of a problem. And then for one or three times a week on different days, I do what is called a five times five, which will involve two to three minutes of high intensity, maximum speed run at zone four or five of my heart rate, and then two to three minutes resting. And I repeat this five times for a total of 25 minutes training. In terms of nutrition, beetroot has been proven to increase your endurance, your VO2 max, and your overall performance. I like to eat it raw, or as a juice at least once per day. Beetroot is a nitrate-rich food that increases endogenous vasodilator nitric oxide. Some studies have shown that daily consumption of beetroot juice lowers blood pressure. A Penn State study showed that it can de-stiffen blood vessels, potentially easing the workload of the heart. Other studies have shown that beetroot juice consumption reduces the oxygen cost of low-intensity exercises 
and enhances tolerance to high intensity exercise in humans. There is no reason not to eat a daily beetroot, which is not only healthy but also delicious. Another part of this protocol is recovery. It is important to sleep seven or more hours per day. It is important not to overload our muscles to avoid injuries. I like to include stretching such as yoga poses on the recovery days or when my muscles are very sore, I prefer to do a light swim in the local pool. Caloric restriction, intermittent fasting, time-restricted feeding are tools that are growing in popularity to improve our health, longevity and performance. A study published in Nature Metabolism showed that daytime restricted feeding enhances the running endurance in mice. There is growing evidence that restricting our feeding window during the day in humans will also yield improvement in health and our endurance and performance. Some people like Brian Johnson have a completely different approach. And so I know from all these processes that eating at roughly 8.30 in the morning, right after I work out on an empty stomach, creates enough t a distance between that completed eating and bedtime where I have no, almost no digestion processes going on in my body. Therefore, my resting heart rate goes very low. And when my resting heart rate is very low, I sleep with high quality. And I wake up in the morning feeling more energized than any other configuration. Cold exposure is another tactic I like to try. If you want to try this at home, you should be very careful and it's better if you can do it in a very controlled environment. Mitochondria, besides being very important in energy production, is also crucial in heat production, especially at very low temperatures. Some studies have shown that cold exposure can activate the brown adipose tissue and mitochondrial biogenesis in skeletal muscles. Having more mitochondria means having higher and more effective energy production. Join the challenge today. Post in a comment your VO2 max. Remember you can measure this through your smartwatch, through a laboratory measurement or with a Cooper test. Then follow the suggested protocols here and post your progress every month. I will do a video with my progress every month and see if I have improved my VO2 max as well. If you like what you heard, please subscribe, like, and recommend. It's time for you to take seriously your life, your health, your endurance, and your performance. Thank you very much.